Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we'll design and prototype and animate a masking animation as you see on the screen right here. It is unbelievably easy and I'm going to show you a quick method to non-destructively create a masking wherein you can update the text even in the future and also change the graphic assets uh, for the animation. Now if you want to learn the basics of masking, I have already created a video and I'm going to link that in the description. So be sure to watch that video and it's pretty informative and I hope you'll like it. If you like this video, uh, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Also share this video with your network so more people can benefit from this. Do consider subscribing to my channel at, as it gives me motivation to create better videos for you. Let's get started. So I'm in Adobe XD and I have an artboard which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. You can choose any artboard size as per your needs. I do have two image uh, images that I've added and loaded already in Adobe XD. Um, you can quickly do that by actually importing assets from Finder or Explorer on Windows and uh, bringing them into Adobe XD or you can simply drag them from Finder or Explorer right into XD. There's no reason to use two different images. I just wanted to show you and basically decide on screen that which one to use. So I'm going to use this one. So let me just delete the other one. Starting with this image, if you would normally like to create a mask of an image, what you do is drag the image on top of the artboard. So now um, the image is actually cropped by default uh, when you drag an image onto the artboard and normally what you'd like to do is then um, using the text tool let's say I'm going to be typing fire in all caps okay and now I'm going to bring this and center it to the artboard let me increase the size quite a bit so it is more impactful usually um, what I what you do is basically select this uh, the text element press shift and select the image behind it as well and if you notice on the properties panel over here we have four boolean operators so the third one amongst those is the intersect tool so you're going to use the intersect tool to basically create a mask um, but this mask well if you're just going to use this uh, as a still image or a still mask this is as far as you'd like to go um, it's the quickest way actually but you can see that it's not creating much impact although this is completely updatable completely customizable and it's non-destructive um, but I want to create an animation out of this and so to create an animation um, this method is actually not going to work we may have to tweak uh, the steps a little and uh, do this another way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first ungroup the intersection. So it's no longer a mask. I'm going to keep the text actually, but to zoom out and move it out over here. So we're going to use this later. Now, as I mentioned, like we're going to tweak this steps a little bit. So what I'm going to do next is using the rectangle tool, I'm going to create a shape and resize this to 1920 by 1080, which is the size of my artboard. There's no particular reason for this size limitations. Again, it is completely up to your design decisions. Uh, but for my case, I'm going to keep this. Um, and just for this example, actually, I'm going to keep this to uh, the artboard size. Let me just rename the layer first. On the layers panel, I have the image or the graphic of fire that is um, the one on the bottom and then there's the rectangle on the top. So I'm going to create a mask for this image using this rectangle. So if I select both the items and right click, I can create a mask out of this. So my goal here is to animate the fire and so I want this image to actually scroll down as the animation 
plays out and that's why i'm creating this mask right so i'm going to re rename this mask image as again fire um we have the underlying image for the mask ready now the next step is to bring this text onto the artboard so we are not going to use this text as is again i'm going to create a rectangle using the rectangle tool the shortcut on the keyboard is the key r for rectangle and again in this case i'm going to create or use the dimensions 1920 by 1080 which is the artboard dimensions let me rename this rectangle just so it's easy for us to understand um i'm going to remove the background because i don't need it i'm going to give this a flashy red color because in the end this is not going to be visible so you can give this any color you want the important thing is the text should be above this rectangle in the layers panel so just make sure you have the text above the rectangle and now select both the layers and then from the properties inspector we're going to select the intersect tool again so now you see that intersect tool actually only leaves us with the text and it has the red color but again this is not going to be visible in the final output so you can give any color you please here so let me just rename this to text right now you still have the ability to actually go in here and change the text to any words so it is a complete non-destructive way and these were the extra steps actually that we had to do now in the layers panel i'm going to select the text and the fire and right click and again select mask with shape so there you have it that's the uh, mask that we were looking for so let me just rename this to mask the reason i'm renaming all these layers is going to be evident in just a moment right so just stay with me over here so this is basically a complex approach that we took uh, from the first way that i showed and that's for a reason the reason being that we want to animate this fire right so what i'm going to do is with this artboard selected i'm going to right click and duplicate you can use the shortcut command or control d to create a duplicate so i want the fire or the animation to start start from here and then let's say in my animation i'm looking to move the underlying image right so if i zoom out i'm going to move the image so the image actually just scrolls from top to bottom so you can see here this is completely non-destructive way uh, because i can make changes i can move things around i can even update the text right but for the sake of this animation i'm going to keep the same words over here uh, if you want to change the text make sure you're changing the text in both the artboards but for this animation what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the size of this text so it covers more area and quickly centering it and again if you see over here i was able to change the properties of the text panel um, of the text layer i'm sorry and that's the added benefit of using this method if i go out over here i can see that it was updated right so this is a smaller text this is a larger text and the image behind the text is actually moved as well you can create more artboards if you want to continue and make a complex animation but just for the sake of this example i'm going to create two artboards and i'm going to move now to the prototype tab to create an interaction between the two artboards so in this animation um there is no particular trigger just for the sake of this example again but if i were to use this animation in my designs or my web design project i would then appropriately give an interaction or a trigger so over here i'm going to just use a time trigger so let me first create a link and now i'm going to choose the trigger as time and i'm going to give this one a one second delay just for showing it to you guys right now i'm going to change the type of this uh, interaction to auto animate and this is why naming the layers was important 
because auto animate actually looks at the two different artboards and animates the changes between those artboards i'm going to be making a separate video to cover all the types of interactions in detail so be sure to subscribe to my channel i'm going to leave the easing to ease in and out and just for the sake of this example i'm going to give the duration of 3 seconds now i want to give this animation to looping from one to the other so i'm going to create another interaction from the second artboard to the first one and i'm going to give the same properties actually now to create a flow in adobe xd i'm going to select the first artboard hit the home icon over here and the flow is created i'm going to save the progress now and with the flow selected i'm going to play So there you have it. Uh, that was a pretty quick way to actually create animated masks in Adobe XD, and this is still completely customizable as this was a non-destructive way. And this is quite important if you have to come back to make any changes in the future. So if you like this video, uh, please hit the like button and show some love. Share this video with your network so more people can use this amazing method. and also subscribe to my channel as i'm going to be creating more amazing videos for you in the future thank you so much for watching